In the time between recording this video and recording the audio, I have already painted another butterfly image, and I think that one is way better than this one, so I hope you'll come back next week when I post the video. The first thing I didn't like about this one was the way that I taped the edges. With the postcards, they're just too small to really even need the tape. I don't use my paint wet enough to make the paper buckle a whole lot, and the paper kind of tears with the tape, and I don't know, I just don't like it as much as the hand-drawn border. So a little bit more about my regular painting process. Uh, with acrylic gouache, I usually block in large areas of color first. Um, I try not to use paint colors straight out of the tube if I can. I think it's a lot better to give at least a little bit of mixing to start with, but I don't go into too much detail because the first thing I want to do is block in the colors and make sure that my sketch wasn't way off base because if there's the worst thing that I can do in a painting is start to get really detailed on like a like a feature of a face or a flower petal and like perfect it and then look and realize the rest of the painting is out of proportion because then there's like no point in finishing. So I start it by getting in all the colors and then usually the next thing I do is start mixing more thin kind of watercolor layers start building up different colors and tones and highlights and shadows. So the reason the acrylic gouache is so awesome for this is because with regular watercolor everything gets really wet and I find it kind of hard to control. I have to plan out my actions ahead of time and that's not really the way that I paint. I kind of start making a mess and then fix it as I go. So with regular acrylics, they're just too shiny for me. And with regular gouache, once you add too many layers, um, it gets too thick and it'll start to crumble. So this is a really nice in-between of everything. Um, and with oil paints, once you lay down a layer, you really have to give it like a day to dry and get tacky so you can try to work more layers in over it and if you just want to cover something up in oil there are some colors that you can never cover up with another color they're they're just too I don't even know the word for it they just show through all the other layers that you put on top of it it gets gunky and gross um, so acrylic gouache is perfect because it's not too shiny and I can layer it like watercolors I can cover things up like acrylics, and I don't have to wait for it to dry like oils. And I think they just call it acrylic gouache so it sounds fancy. I think it's more like matte acrylic. So the butterfly's eyes. I thought while I was doing this that I was making them kind of stylized, but then I looked at some of the other photos of the butterfly and oh my god, they have the most hilarious little faces. There's one photograph that I have that I'm really excited about painting one of these days. He just looks like a cartoon villain. So yeah, I'm not really sure exactly how realistic the eyes are. Because at some point in a painting, I have to stop looking at the reference photo and kind of just start going with what makes the painting seem more correct and complete. Especially with the kind of what split focus backgrounds that I have. A lot of times in those backgrounds there's other <laughs> just garbage like um, in the other butterfly photo that I painted. Um, there was a piece of blue something and like the blue looked really great against the rest of the painting, but it was a piece of trash. So like there was there was no way for me to paint it in without it looking ridiculous. So I ended up kind of mushing some other blue spots in. I'm really sorry that this last, like the cherry on top of this painting is his antenna. And for some reason, the video is all crap for that scene. 
Maybe I just didn't focus correctly. So, to make up for it, I will give you a long, slow, satisfying sound of peeling the tape off the painting. 